Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec with The Daily Stock Market and welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. We're having an excellent day today. Today is Thursday, guys. A lot of people are down and these Mary Jane stocks were flying high all week, no pun intended, and they come crashing down today. So what are we going to be talking about? You guessed it, the Mary Jane Do You Want It stocks. And let's talk about all the popular ones like Tilray and Canopy Growth. Aurora, and SNDL. So if that sounds like something you're definitely interested in, make sure you smack a thumbs up on this video before it even starts. Show some love to the channel and comment below right now, what is your favorite Mary Jane stock? So just to do a quick recap on the day, we're up $200. We were up $300 at one point, and then we went all the way down. Look in this one little time frame. We lost like $500, but then we actually gained a bunch of it back about $300, $400, and we're ending today up $200, $300 plus. Now, if we go to the week, we're up $1,200. In the last month, we're up $4,292, 18%. And in the last three months, we're really banking, guys, $9,000, 49% in the last three months. So congratulations to myself. So the first one we're going to talk about, let's get right into the video, is Tilray because you guys are all in love with it. And yesterday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday, the beginning of the week, everyone was sending me messages. Check out Tilray, check out Tilray, I just bought $1,000, just bought $10,000. And right now, we're down 50% on Tilray, guys. So if now is not the time to buy, I don't know when is. No, I'm just kidding. But let's take a deeper look into it and see some common support resistance where I would recommend buying. And then we're also going to dive into the financials of these companies so we can compare them against each other and see which one is the most balanced. So what you can see, the volume is 200 nearly, which is astonishing. It's a lot. Market cap is 3 billion. 52 week high, 52 week low is one of the widest gaps you guys have ever seen. And I want you to start scrolling down to the bottom and looking at the CEO, the headquarters, founded employees. And when you look at headquarters, make sure you can tell if this is a Canada stock or a U.S. stock whenever we're looking at these Mary Jane stocks. For example, this one says British Columbia, so it's obviously Canada. And guys, remember, on a federal level in the United States, it is not legal yet. So that's a big thing. In Canada, it was legal on a federal level like last year. But the good thing is with the whole Joe Biden becoming president and the blue wave coming, there's a lot of built up momentum and excitement behind these stocks. And that's why they have been rallying like crazy. Like Tilray was up like 65% or a hundred and something percent just in the span of a week. But what nobody's looking at is the U.S. based Mary Jane stocks and the American U.S. based Mary Jane stocks. If we look at a lot of these stocks, stocks on the list will scroll down to the headquarters and we're actually going to see a lot of them are in canada so what you might want to look at in this video it gives you a heads up because everyone's looking at these canadian stocks mary jane stocks maybe you should actually go and look and try to find some american some u.s mary jane stocks because i think that those are some great ones that can actually take off and some examples are like kira leaf holdings Green Thumb Industries, True Leaf Cannabis Corp, Crisco Labs, but we probably won't be covering those in this video. That might be a next video. Right now, I want to talk about all the popular ones and the ones that everyone really wants to know about. Also, if we look, a lot of these same stocks that we're going to be talking about in this video are following the same pattern. They IPO'd and then they shot up into an incredible amount, $145. And then what they do for two years? They just went down 93%, 95%. They lost all their steam. And just recently, they're showing signs of life. So you might want to look into it a little bit more if you want to invest in the Mary Jane sector. The thing is, I'm not sure if Canadian stocks can mail Mary Jane over to the United States or transport it over to the United States. I'm pretty sure that's illegal because it's not federally legal yet. So you might want to look into that. Now, there is rumors, and it's probably very, very, very possible that it will become legal on a federal level in the next three to four years with Biden as president. So if that does happen, it should give Canadian 
Mary Jane stocks a better chance at success because then they can transport from Canada to the United States to California, Nevada, Florida, all over the United States too. So now that we got that out of the way, it is very important to look at that. We can look at some supports and resistance and really just in the last week, they've identified themselves. They broke out all the way to 62 and they were as low as 26 in the past week. Right now they're at $33. So in my opinion, they can go under 30 and I would say anything under 30 to $20 is going to be a buy for Tilray. So if they get to $20, $30, I would start buying a small amount and I would probably do them all the same way, all the stocks on this list. I would start small. I would put in like $25 by like one share. And then if it goes down even lower, buy like $50 worth, $100 worth. The lower it goes, keep buying more. Because as you see on the next stock on this list, it's going to be Aurora. What happens, guys? You'll actually see there's a huge spike, right? Well, we'll actually go back a little bit more. There was a huge spike. It falls down 50%, 57%. What happened here? Another huge spike on, on May 20th. And then it falls down 72% from that spike. All right, guys, look, there's another spike right here. And look what happens. It falls down again. So with Aurora, whenever there's a big spike like that, and I was telling this to my close friends members, by the way, whenever there's a big spike like that, it always falls down. So I would say that this one is a buy right around $10 or $11. Wait for it to fall a little bit lower and then pounce on it when it gets lowered to like $10. Also, if you check out the market cap, they're $2.2 billion. Their 52-week high, 52-week low is absolutely incredible again. And their volume is $74 million. So it's way less than Tilray. Now we'll look at the CEO. We look at the headquarters. It's in Calgary, Alberta, which is in Canada, guys. So we have another Canadian Mary Jane stock. And I personally own Aurora and CGC also. We're still up 50% or so, even with this 22% correction. So if we look at what's going on here in the last month, they've actually gained a lot of traction. And you'll see they're down at 32 at one point and even as low as 29, right? And if we go back to the three-month mark, they were at 24. I would say wait for this one to hit about $30 a share and do the same strategy as with the other ones. Buy slowly, start putting a slow amount in, and the lower it goes, the more money you load up for long term. Now, if we look here, this is a $13 billion market cap. So this one's a lot larger than all the other ones. And the volume's a lot smaller too, which means it shouldn't be as volatile. And I haven't actually read this article yet, but it might be good just to look into it if you guys want to pause it and read it a little bit. What well, goes up must come down, but not necessarily this fast. Canadian stocks that posted staggering gains on Wednesday were falling as fast Thursday morning while U.S. Multi-state operations or MSOs were down just a little bit. So that's what I was talking about, guys. You might want to look into the MSOs, the multi-state operations, because they weren't as hit as large as the Canadian sector was. So if we scroll down here and we see what ones they were talking about for the MSOs, you'll actually see it was some of the ones that I was listing off earlier. So Alternative Harmless MJ, an exchange-traded fund with exposure to the Business was down 16%. It's Wednesday closed. The ETF is still up 94% year to date. Meanwhile, Curelief, a U.S. operator that lists shares over the counter in the U.S. was down only 2%. And Green Thumb Industries, GTBIF, Crisco Labs, and Trueleaf Cannabis were only down 2 to 4%, guys. So those might be some ones you want to look into. Those are some of the U.S. operations that we were talking about earlier in the video. Now, also be careful because they're saying that some of these Canadian um, Mary Jane stocks are kind of like the new GameStop, right? They're just going to go up really high because of Reddit, and then they're going to fall and crash like crazy and burn. So be careful where you're putting your money, especially with these Canadian ones. And you guys, I'll hate to say it, but if you look at I posted this about 20 hours ago on my on my Instagram are you investing in the cannabis sector right now? This is a super hot sector right now that could have a possible pullback. So I hate to say that I definitely called this one the pullback that would happen today, but I definitely did. You can even go to my Instagram and see that I posted this video yesterday about the possible pullback too. 
All right, next up we have APHA, and it looks like the same exact graph as Tilray, right? So right around 16, 17, it's like right at one of the supports right now. So if it breaks this support down to $16, it can easily fall back to $12 to $10 too. So I would say right at about $12, you want to be putting this on your list to be buying and holding for a long term. The market cap is $3.8 billion. The average volume is a lot less. And here we see Leamington, Ontario. So here is another Canadian stock. All right, and we'll go over one more stock and then we'll dive into the financials, even though this video is already pretty long, but I know you guys probably want to see the financials. So we'll just speed right over the financials. We won't dive too deep into them. So what you'll see is SNDL, Sundell Grower, Growers, up 99% in the last week. And it even capped out at 188% in one week, right? This is one, this is like the poster child that everyone's talking about of these stocks that probably should have been the first one on the list that we talked about, but oh well, we saved it for last. So I would be not buying this stock until a dollar and 20 cents or a dollar and 30 cents. That's me personally waiting to get a good deal because I think that this one can crash the hardest because if we go to a one day mark, they're only down 20%. And at 10 a.m., they were up 5% at 9.55. Right, I'm on California time, by the way, so your times might be looking a little bit different than mine. The market opens right around 6.30 to 7 a.m. over here, and then it crashed 25%, went back up, and now it's going to be crashing again. So if you do have some money in Sundale, and what you guys should be doing, which I taught a lot of my students, is you should be pressing sell, you should be pressing dollars up there, and you should be pressing trailing stop order, and you should be giving it like a 20% cushion right so if it goes to or even a 10 percent cushion so if it goes to two dollars 11 cents it automatically sells this is what you guys should have done at market open so it might be a little bit too late now but because this stock can go as low as a dollar 50 cents or even a dollar and 30 cents a dollar 20 cents you might want to be careful you might want to at least minimize your position so if for example you have a thousand dollars into the stock you might want to just sell $300 or $500 worth to minimize your risk and still hold on to a good position that $500 you still have in the stock just in case it goes back up and if it goes to the moon, so you guys like to say. <laughs> but if we look at some of the stats on this one, you'll actually see the market cap is 2.3. The volume, it says is zero, which is obviously an error. error. If we look at the average volume, it's 1.3 billion. So the volume just might be so high that it actually has an error going on Robinhood because it's obviously not 1.3 billion and it's obviously not zero on the volume. So if we scroll down again, we see Calgary, Alberta. Every stock guy on the uh, guys on this list is following the same trend. They're all from Canada, every one of them. So remember what we talked about in the beginning of this video is very important, especially because it's not legal at a federal level in the United States. So really, you're just betting on Canada. It, it is federally legal in Canada, but there's no way legally to get it from Canada to America until it becomes federally legal in America also. So I think we covered that pretty well in the beginning of the video, so we won't go over it again. But let's go over the financials now, just on like the top three stocks. So we'll do like Tilray, we we'll, might do Sundial, and then we'll also do Canopy Growth and Aurora. All right, so let's do this fast. So what you'll see is net income. They've actually been losing money. I'm sure all of these are going to be losing money year over year consistently. They've actually lost $300 million in 2019. Their total revenue is what's going to be important when looking at these stocks. So total revenue went from $12 million to 20 to 43 all the way to $166 million in Tilray in 2019. And if we click the 2020 statement, I just kind of want to look. They did... 51 million just in quarter three, right? So they're absolutely killing it. They're spanking it right now, guys. Tilray on the revenue. Their revenue beast, their revenue monster. They're growing 100% revenue pretty much every single year. So that's why they have an explosion of growth. Now, the balance sheet isn't the best thing in the world. 68%, they have liabilities, they have assets. 800 in assets, 600 in liabilities isn't the worst thing in the world, 
but let's rapid fire these financials and let's pull up the next one so we can kind of compare the total revenue because that's mainly what we want to look at when looking at these stocks. All right, so now we have SNDL pulled up and 2017, they're negative a million, which isn't the worst thing in the world. 2019, they're negative 200 million, which is a huge incre increase. Their total revenue is not as good as Tilray, guys. Not even close. They only did 58 million in the whole year. And if we look at the current revenue, in 2020 Q3, the revenue was only 9.6 million. Remember, Tilray did 50 million in one quarter in Q3 2020. So this is the most recent numbers. Now, if we go to their balance sheet, their balance sheet's a little bit better than Tilray, but not enough for me to give them the edge. So right now, Tilray is my favorite over SNDL based off the financials. Let's look at the next one, which is going to be Aurora. All right, so we have Aurora pulled up. Net income was only 4.4 negative, 9.9 negative. And wow, look at that. They turned a profit in 2018. They were actually profitable at 52 million, which is a big deal. And then in 2020, they reported negative 2.4 billion in income, not even in revenue. Now they are killing it in revenue, needless to say. They're a revenue beast, they're a revenue monster. They had a thousand percent growth, 200% growth, 300% growth, and then only a 9.8% growth. So in 2020, they didn't do anything killer or extreme. Their revenue in Q3 was 51 million. So their revenue is about the same as Tilray. But this is where they really stand out compared to Tilray, is their balance sheet, guys. Say it with me, balance sheet. All right, perfect. This looks awesome. Look at the blues and assets, and the, the pink is the liabilities. To make it really easy for you guys, we want as much assets as possible and as low as liabilities as possible. And ACB is doing a great job of that. They have 20% liabilities to assets, which is about four times to five times as much assets to liabilities, which is the exact number I like to look for in a stock, four to five times the amount of assets than liabilities. So they actually get an A plus on their balance sheet. They have really good revenue. So I doubt that anyone's going to beat ACB out for first place. Tilray's still in second place. So ACBC just took the crown for first place. Let's look at at cgc all right so they're not turning a profit either remember i said most of these guys are probably going to be negative on in net income they're negative 700 million almost 1 billion and their revenue is amazing that is a great thing to see is the revenue 100 181 percent, 65 percent to 881 million in revenue and wow look at that just in q2 of 2020 which is the most recent numbers they did a hundred million just in one quarter, guys, in revenue. That's really good for these companies. They're up 75% year over year. And look at that debt to asset, guys. Wow, another one. We have the total assets, total liabilities at about 17% in 19 and 20%, 24% in 2020. So guys, guess what? CGC just beat out ACB. They're pretty much equal and pretty much even. The only reason I'm giving it to CGC, the little bit of an edge, is because they're growing revenues more and they have $100 million in revenue in Q2 of 2020, which was a 75% year-over-year growth. So guys, there you have it. CGC is the undisputed Mary Jane stock winner and uh, Aurora is second. Tilray is third. That's my official rankings. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope you did like it. Hopefully it wasn't too long or tedious. Comment below to let me know if you like the longer videos or if you just like a short video where I pop it out a lot quicker. I was trying to go rapid fire on these ones, but there was a lot to talk about, especially with the Canadian to the US federal and legal and all of that stuff too. And then we had to go over the financials and everything too. So give me some feedback. If you guys don't mind some longer videos and that's fine, that's awesome because that's how I like to do it. I don't like to make like a two, five minute video or something like that because then you don't get to hear my full thoughts and my full details on this video. So guys, we're not just like a TikToker that just does a quick 60 second, the 30 second financial stock pick and say, oh, pick this stock, but you don't get to hear my reasons why. You always get to hear my reasons why and my thought process behind them. So if you enjoy that and you respect that, smack a thumbs up, comment below. I wanna hear you guys talking in the comments to me so I can get some feedback from you guys too. 
We're absolutely growing here. Every single day, our community keeps growing, growing, growing. We're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you want to join my private group, DM me on Instagram. Here's my Instagram. You can actually look through uh, what you'll see here. It says student success, this highlight here, student success. Feel free to look through that. There's over 100 testimonials now, and we have over 400 successful students now too. So once you look through that, you can also look through success number two because we filled up that highlight. We had to make a second one. So this one's more recent success stories. Read through that. DM me on Instagram. If you're a beginner, this program is for you. We outline everything from the beginning too, and you can learn to trade the right way and the safe way. So guys, share this video with a friend, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace. Peace.